Um, I wanted to sort of ask for the question. Uh, my, my idea around this was sort of to, to get a discussion going around um, what I consider uh, a bit of a problem space, and that's around IPv6 documentation prefix. And, and is it really too, slow, <laughs> too small for, for what we need for building things like labs and, and documentation and a bunch of other stuff? So I just thought I'd throw it out to the group. Um, let me let me sort of dive in and, and we'll, we'll sort of talk about what we want to cover, which is what I think the issue, the problem, or the use case is, what I think the proposed solutions are, and sort of what the current status is. Um, so the issue, the problem, and the use case is, I don't think 2001 db 8 colon colon slash 32 is big enough, <laughs> which probably a couple of people are looking at me sideways, but that's okay. Uh, we're running into some challenges around uh, with with the current documentation space of, of building labs at scale, uh, building joint lab environments, um, uh, you know, in terms of uh, things around large national laboratories. We can't document or design anything that's really larger than a slash 32 um, without giving away the address space uh, that, that the design is currently utilizing. Uh, we can't run, we, we're currently running into this with a lot of the Fortune 1000, the US federal and US state agencies that we're working with around V6 projects today, which is principally who our customers are. And, and ULA is really not usable in a dual stack lab scenario. So we need something that looks and behaves like a global unicast, but is sort of local in scoping. Uh, and then projects are already using larger lab allocations today that just aren't out of the 2001, which means we're just squatting on space, which is a whole different structural issue and and so just sort of wanted to talk through those so we had a couple of proposed uh, solutions i'll post the links for those particular drafts or if someone else has the links for them they can post them but we have two drafts uh, one for additional documentation space one for additional lab space here it is this is the breakdown for lab we want to reuse the 200 colon colon slash seven which is some you know formerly the the osi nsap you know map prefix stuff uh, for documentation, we want to reuse, repurpose the old site local FEC zero colon colon slash ten. Uh, for documentation, we want to repurpose the old six phone and <laughs> the three FFE colon colon slash sixteen, and uh, we'll continue to use the documentation two thousand one DB eight colon colon slash thirty two. Uh, the other option that we're sort of considering is maybe expanding the two thousand one DB eight colon colon slash thirty two, and, uh, and 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 sort of uh, you know popping that bigger. Um, or consider a new prefix entirely. I'm, I'm not super tied to it one way or the other. Um, but one of the things I note is that all the address space that we sort of dug through and sort of picked are either already on bug on lists, already on block lists, or already on filters. And they're, they're, they're all being used in, in terms of sort of previously, previously being allocated, but either returned or deprecated uh, back in Diana. So they're sitting there as a deprecated status or they're sitting there as a return status uh, back in the Diana site. So if you take a look at those, that's what you'll see. Um, so, you know, just just if there's any questions about where we, we we dug through the recycle bin or the discard bin and tried to pull stuff back out. Uh, and the reason we pulled it back out of this list is because uh, as standard practice for what we've seen for many of the V6 deployments, almost all of these are on existing block lists for anything that would go into the into the default free zone. So you're just not gonna see this address space. And then even, even if we wanna reuse it uh, later down the line, it's gonna be incredibly difficult to, to get it out of those lists. So the current status, I was sort of surprised at the number of objections from the IETF v6 ops mailing list. So I just highlighted it or just summarized a few of those, which was, hey, just use the ULA space. Uh, you just don't understand what the heck it is and how it works. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> use, use 2001 DBA 32 and prefix shift, which means, uh, you know, hey, you know, claim that you're doing a 32, actually allocate 64s instead and prefix shift everything over and you get a bigger address address uh, design space mm -hmm. that you can utilize. So, uh, you know, don't represent your sites as 48s, represent them as 64s and then move your way up and just sort of, you know, shift, shift, your, shift your nimbles. It uh, doesn't really work for a lab. Uh, maybe it might work for some address planning components. Uh, really doesn't work for a lab that actually needs to lab everything that they're actually doing in advance because that's actually how they deploy within environments. And we, we've seen this with several of the big shops that we're working with. Uh, and then we're just trying to recover, you know, we're trying to, we, we've gotten the statement that they're trying to recover prefixes now. And we're concerned that we got the comment they're concerned they're going to run out of V6 address space within the next 50 years, which. <laughs> I, I don't really know where, you know, this was a, a sideline comment, but this was from, from some of the folks on, on, on that side. And 
I don't know why I would be worried about that issue up front. We're trying to get people to adopt V6. I'm not really yeah. worried about doing a small allocation for a, more documentation and, and lab space. And then the other comment was you're allocating way too large a prefix for that purpose. Um, but my argument is we're reusing what was already thrown in the garbage bin anyway. So how the argument around a larger prefix really doesn't carry a lot of weight, at least to me. Um, you know, the issue I you know, the issues identified are not legitimate needs. So that what we outlined in terms of use cases isn't, isn't really legitimate. You know, go pound sand is, is sort of the comment around it. So I wanted to just sort of engage people just in general. This I'm, I'm not, you know, it's not like I'm, you know, firm. I, I obviously threw this idea out there that I think we need more, but we're in a sort of unique use case around the customers that we're dealing with and who we're interacting with. And I don't know what else, what other folks in the community are, are dealing with. I, I do have a bunch of the folks that are on the these initial drafts, uh, folks that are with some of the national science laboratories that are dealing with this structural issue very interactively today. And uh, some other folks who are dealing with this at large scale for service providers who are actually doing things like merging service providers together and they need to put all the architecture together and a slash 32 isn't gonna do it because every yeah. provider they're working with has at least probably a 32 or larger in terms of allocations. So they literally can't build designs. So they just have to squat on space to, to come up with design solutions. I think it makes far more sense for us as, as a group to sort of come up with what we think is appropriate and what makes sense. So I wanted to throw the idea out there and just sort of get feedback from everyone. And, and that's that's literally, that's it. That's it. You can send me an email at hexaville.io. I'm on Twitter at, at eHorley if you want to have the debate in the public forum. <laughs> or you can hit me on the V6 Ops mailing list. That's fine too. I read all of that. Uh, I, don't, I realize not everyone necessarily participates in, in watching those lists, and which is one of the reasons I wanted to present. That was it, about as quick as you, quick as you can get through it. No, it's pretty good, you know. When you send us the, the title of the talk, I was not like, what? You know, really? Uh, and then, uh, then uh, I actually, in the meantime, I was talking with Craig and he explained to me a bit like, actually that makes sense because for example, even when I worked for a large enterprise a few years ago, we had multiple such 32s for different regions, right? Right. Um, and there was a historic reason why it happened that way and why they acquired so many prefixes. But actually, if someone is trying to build an architecture, as you say, you know, a design, uh, yeah, documentation such 32 doesn't work for that. So Tom's yeah, got a question, and I hope he can. his audio is going to work. Tom? Is, you want to post it in the chat? And I, I could stop screen sharing if that's easier just to be able to have um, a, I think it's a problem with his client. Yeah. And I, I'll, I'll just leave this slide up just so folks can see the prefixes that we actually mm -hmm. were sort of talking about. So. Yeah. So there were other people. Yeah, you can hit me up offline if you want, uh, whatever works out. Any any other thoughts from the group around it? I'm, I, am I completely crazy or is this like, you know? I, mean, I think there's I, a good justification for a bit more space for documentation purposes when you need to. And I've got some other ideas around lab that I'll throw out there. I didn't I didn't articulate them here, but I can throw them out. Like the, the, the using 200 colon colon slash seven, which seems like a, a obnoxiously large amount of address space. I would actually propose splitting it like what we do with ULA, which is basically to have a reserved portion at 200 colon colon slash eight at 300 colon colon slash slash eight, that would actually sort of map, it's sort of convenient because it matches sort of global. We got 2000, we have 200, we got 3000, we got 300. Sort of makes a little bit of logical sense, not great because it doesn't work once we get past 3000 <laughs> on the allocation basis, but that's okay. Um, but the goal would actually be that maybe we come up with a schema to actually allow vendors to actually reserve lab space. So when they build solution offerings, any of the vendors, you know, Cisco, Juniper, Arista, et cetera, anyone else, anyone who wants to build a software solution, they could just get a 32 actually assigned to them, and that 32 would allow them to publish well-known address space uh, configurations for labs that are specifically owned by that particular vendor. And they can pre-deploy those. You could pre-deploy those for public cloud. You could pre-deploy those for being, being able to download packages. They would maintain that space in terms of making sure there are not collisions, which means all their divisions or business units could actually build labs that all interoperate together and people could just auto-deploy them. No, they would never run into a problem with address space that it would pre-deploy correctly for everything that they want to do. We'd have 16 million, whatever, you know, slash 32s out of the of the slash eight to be able to, to give to, to vendors, which I think is probably plenty. And then 
the upper half or, or the lower half, depending on which way you want to divide it, uh, could be used for everyone else just to free form, just to be able to go grab address space and I think, you know, uh, be able to allocate and build labs. And I think there's a really good use case within the national laboratory side. You have a bunch of national laboratories that interact and, and, and do work with each other, but no one actually owns the lab that they're all collaborating on. They need some space to be able to park that stuff because labs are coming in and out in participation. So assigning a single global unicast to that group may not make sense. And they probably don't actually want to make it available to, to the general wider internet in general. And it's just for the purpose of lab um, to validate what they want to build. So it makes a lot of sense to be able to do something like that. In addition, there's someone already squatting on 200 colon colon slash seven for a VPN project. So it's already being used in, in the wild in terms of some projects that are going on out there. So it sort of makes a little bit of sense to sort of throw it in there as, as, as something else. Yeah, Tom has articulated his question in the chat now. Oh, more than 32 for lab and documentation. Yeah, this isn't for everyone. I totally, uh, it's, it's not, but you have to realize I'm, the customers I'm dealing with, I have Fortune 1000 uh, federal and state institutions. They all fit as larger than 32 so the mass majority of the time. In fact, many of the organizations we're dealing with just doing their cloud configurations, their public cloud, bring your own addressing schemas are 32s alone. So, you know, <laughs> by the time you add up all the regions and you deal with all the availability zones and the fact that 48s are minimums and like everything else that you need to do, you're at 32s for cloud allocations. And so by the time you move past that architecture and look what they need to request in aggregate, things get very large very quickly. Um, modeling that out, being able to have example use cases and being able to have labs to allow them to build things out appropriately. It's just, we can't do it with the documentation. Trust me, we've tried. <laughs> can't squeeze in what we wanna do. We're, 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 robbing, we're robbing nibbles in order to be able to solve the problem. Some of the folks in the ITF who responded back, just rob nibbles, we don't care. Like, you know, and, <laughs> Which okay, I mean, I can take that as a as as a bit of feedback. I just sort of sort of curious if it if it makes makes sense. And I'm also willing to consider handing back 2001 DB8 and just saying like maybe that needs to go back to the general pool and we should pick something out as a new prefix entirely that doesn't interfere with something in the middle of allocation ranges that people might want to uh, want to actually do. 